Well, rainy day out there, trying to work on the Jeep in Washington. Never fun like that, but uh, right now I'm working on how to extend bump stops without uh, yet buying some extension ones just because I'm getting a whole lot of possible blowout off of my lift with a six inch lift, three inches from new perks from Rough Country and new the new pack perks and then a two and a half inch drop and then with a higher axle mount on the Chrysler out in the quarter I put in. So we're gonna be taking some of this two and one quarter, uh, 20 gauge, 10 gauge, some amount of steel, sitting in the extra bin. And we're going to double stack some of this so it's two inches and that's gonna help clear the two and a half inch difference between the amount of travel space we have between our shock and the amount of travel space we have between the bump stop and where it contacts the axle. Well, sometimes you have to get innovative and put a bunch of extensions on your ratchet wrench. And I do, do recommend keeping a lot of these on hand. I'm using the 13 millimeter and one hand to hold it. There we go. And it's going. I was using a wobble earlier to get the, the more forward of the bolts, just to get around everything. But the back one is out. And this was after soaking overnight using the Rust Buster. I really, really recommend Liquid Wrench. And it's out. Now we can get to fabricating the extensions. All right, we've got our parts out and we've got our old bolts soaking in rust dissolver. I prefer Rust-Oleum rust dissolver, works great. Eats away the rust and when you put them back in with some anti-seize, they will just, they'll last forever, good as new. And what we're gonna do is this is two by one 10 gauge stock, drill holes to mount up onto the base of the bump stop and then to have enough room to access nut and bolts to clamp the bump stocks on as well as the original nuts that will go back into the frame we're going to be cutting these d sections out and sandwiching it together and weld so that at the openings there will be enough space to get in here with your wrenches and not get yourself stuck in a pretty bad situation where your wrench is permanently attached to your car. We're all the same size, but I've squared them all up. They're all the same size. We've got two sets now, or one set of two, because these will be getting welded together. So next step is we're gonna cut out these center sections so that we'll have bolt access. On. We've got three of these done, and I just wanted to show you, this one isn't done. You can see it's really sharp, jagged edges from the cutting. And we wanna dull those all down just in case you're ever you know, when your finger's in here and you're trying to tighten or loosen the nuts on and fit stuff in, you don't want to cut yourself or hurt yourself. Or if someone else is ever doing it, a mechanic or the next owner, you don't want people to hurt themselves on your, because of your fabrication abilities. So dull those edges down as much as possible. Remember to try and leave as much room for the welds to stick to. You don't want to be burning through or welding to really thin metal that's just going to tear or crack. And so I'm going to finish beveling this one up and I'll set up the welder and we'll start welding. Now here's a good lesson. I just tacked these two sides together and as you can see it's not perfectly squared up on this side. This side's pretty well done. So the reason I just tacked these before uh, running a bead is one, I like to stitch my beads which means doing an inch here, skip an inch, an inch here, skip an inch, go back, fill this inch, and then fill that inch. And 
that breaks the bead up a little bit. So if any of them develop a crack, that crack won't just spread all the way through the whole stitch or the whole bead. Second is little accents like this, where in the vise, one edge was squared up while the other edge was not. So now I'm gonna take the angle grinder, just cut these welds out, just the one on this side, square this side up a bit better, tack it back down. They are, they are together as together can be with what we have. And so I will be buffing these down with a sander just to see if I have any cracks or divots that I missed and I'll fill those back in with some more weld if there are any there. Now, when you get a nicer welder and more practice, you'll start to get those dimes and they'll be a lot prettier than the ones I have here. So, now let's uh, weld up the second one. We'll drill them, paint them, and slap them on the Jeep. Now we've got these decently sanded flat, so there's no more ridge and pretty confident in all the welds. So I'm driving the center, center punches. And the point of a center punch is that when you're guiding your drill bit, so your drill bit won't wander. So you go smack, smack with your guides and it leaves you with two little indentations here and here. And I'm gonna be using some Well, from my skull into the real world, power of power tools. So as you can see, this is why we cut out the interior so we could get, get those bolts into access. And I just used from my storage bin for uh, four extra nut and bolts and these happen to have silicone self-locking nuts, which will be nice, so these won't come loose. And then I'm reusing the original bolts into the frame. And one thing I am going to didn't do here, and I'm but I am doing on this one, and I'll go back and do it on this one, is I'm going to oversize one of the bolts on the frame side, because as you can see, here they have one of these is oversized because whether or not it's shifted or just different makes and models the precision in these jeep cherokees is let's call it in the area of precision A couple helpful hints. Uh, one, don't forget to anti-seize your frame side bolts before you put them back in. Two, I do recommend assembly of the bushing onto the bracket beforehand. As you can see, you can't quite get these in and out super easily. They contact right there. Ignore what I previously said. We are not done with this project because we have our new bump stops in. Well, now the bumps, new bump stops and the extension brackets are in, and you can see in comparison to the amount of space between the bump stop and the axle tube, and the amount of space the shock has between the top of the shock here and the top of the shock tower up here. This is less space so that when the axle shifts up, it will contact and limit here before the shock blows itself out before it contacts the upper body and over compresses. Now that was the entire reason we did this project. Now you can buy shocks 
the bump stops like this, or you can build a bracket like we did, or you can do both. It really depends on the amount of space and travel you have with your shocks, what you need to limit, and what your suspension flexibility goals and requirements are. If it's a daily driver, a weekend warrior, a full crawler, whatever it is, it's gonna be different. So just take a ruler, measure out the space, and figure out how much space you need to close. Now, this project is done. And remember, if some guy can do it, like and subscribe, comment. If you've got any questions, thoughts, please follow along and see what projects we do next.